Hi guys and welcome to Iron Game Over channel. I will be starting a new series talking about different PC parts or computer parts and what they do. Um, there is a lot of people that ask me uh, what are the PC parts and um, how they fit within the computer structure, within the, within the computer system. Because lots of people don't know how the computers are built, or what are the separate PC parts, or what they do, or which role they have in a computer. So this is what this series will be all about. As a first, we'll talk about processor, or the CPU. Processor, or otherwise known as a CPU, or central processing unit, is basically the brain of your computer. Generally speaking, the faster the processor, the quicker your computer will be. Everything you want your computer to do will be interpreted and executed by your CPU. In the same way, the more you spend on your processor, the better performance you will get. There are two main manufacturers on the market nowadays, Intel and AMD. As of now, or while we are still in 2015, Intel has an edge when it comes to performance, power consumption and heat output. Their processors are also a pricier option. As a rule of thumb, you would be looking to buy an Intel CPU if you need an absolute best performance or an AMD CPU if you're on a budget. But as always, there are some considerations to be made here. What is your actual primary use of your computer? Do you only browse the web? And watch movies? Or do you play demanding games? Maybe you're into content creation or video and audio production. Determining a purpose of your new PC is a key to start making the choices and in turn not overspending on your hard-earned cash. Why? Well it's simple. If you don't push your PC, low level or a quiet or a cool low-end CPU will be more than enough. Well, let's say you're playing games. Games do love high frequencies and hate multiple cores. I mean, as usual, there's few exem there are few exemptions, but not many, really. If you're rendering 3D animations or videos, any software you use will thank you for as many cores as you can afford. Processor choice will continue with the socket or where you mount your processor. Currently, Intel has two types, consumer-oriented 1150 and a pro-user-oriented 2011 free. Older 1155 and 2011 are still available but not recommended. Also, as a new addition, at the, literally a few days ago, Intel introduced a new family of processors that will be uh, running on a different uh, 1151 socket. But let's concentrate on the 1150 family, and your choices are as follows. The basic are Pentium processors. They are the lowest end performance-wise, but also least power draw. They will be good enough for web browsing and movie watching or streaming, etc., but really nothing else. If we move on up, you have Core i3 processors. Higher performance with slightly higher power draw, Really half decent integrated graphics processor, good for low end gaming or if a maximal graf graphical fidelity is not an issue for you. That's about it. Moving on up again, you have Core i5 processors. They are high performance, slightly higher power draw, half decent integrated graphics processor. Really a sweet spot for gamers. They are great for gaming. If paired with a good graphics card, something that we'll be talking about in another episode. And then, at the top end, we have Core i7 processors. Those are very high performance, higher power draw, quite a half decent integrated graphics processor, and this is a processor of choice for gamers and creative individuals alike. It is great for gaming and great for content creation. There's also a Socket 2011 free and but that should be really reserved for prosumers and professionals there are two classes you will encounter here you have core i7 processors which gives you an extreme performance 
with a very high power draw. They're expensive, have no integrated graphics processor, so that means that you actually have to buy a graphics card separately. They are great for content creators, but will also manage gaming without any problems whatsoever. And then there are Xeon processors. Those offer extreme performance, very high power draw. They are extremely expensive, but have a great reliability. Again, no integrated graphics processor, so buy your graphics card separately. They are aimed solely at the professional content creators and server use. Uh, although they will do well at gaming, gaming will be discouraged because they're actually not as good as a normal consumer processor. So how about AMD? Well, let's move on to AMD. Nowadays, AMD trails behind Intel in terms of performance, but they do provide some fantastic options for people on the budget and present a generally better bang for your buck. AMD choices are much simpler to make than an Intel, as a, as a socket will determine the performance you will get. So you have AM1 socket, which are basically for Sempron and Athlon processors. They are very low end, very low power consumption. They're generally only good enough for web browsing and movie watching or movie streaming. Then you have an FM2 socket, which is uh, suited for A-line processors. They're sort of like a middle ground. Good performance, medium to high power draw, generally good for gaming. And at the top end, you have a M3 Plus socket for FX processors. Those are high to very high performance with high to very high power draw. They're really good for gaming. They're quite actually really quite good for content creation. Although, if you're a professional content creator, you actually might be looking Intel way for the moment, unless AMD um, comes up with some sort of new architecture that will blow Intel away. AMD also provides its Opetron CPUs line aimed at professionals and server use, but those tend to not be available for purchase at many retailers. I certainly didn't see any at any of uh, my local retailers or even e-tailers. E so we will be not be covering them here. If you are still interested to read about those, I will post a link down below uh, to a good article about them. So to summarize, determine what will you need your computer for and your budget, and then depending on that, decide for Intel or AMD. And then based on that, you'll narrow your CPU choices to a handful and it will make it easier to choose from and then ultimately. So I hope this would help you and um, I'll see you in the next part. In the second part, we'll cover motherboards. So um, stay tuned for that and I'll see you around. Thank you for uh, listening. Thank you for tuning in and um, like the video if you can and dislike if you didn't like it and leave the comments down below. Take care.